Alrighty guys, welcome back to the PSU. So, you've just bought an i7 12700K or 12700KF and you want to overclock it to get more performance? Well, today I will give you two profiles, one for productivity and one just for gaming. And I will also show you a couple of tricks. The build we're going to be overclocking is this one. We have a 360mm cooler from Deepcool and then we have this Gigabyte Z690 motherboard with ddr5 but if you have ddr4 it's the same exact thing so let's go into the bios and let's get straight into the settings okay so here we are into the bios now first of all i will give you a quick preset in case you want to just copy the settings set it and forget it and this is gonna be for everything so gaming and productivity then after that i will give you just a quick preset in case you want to do just gaming because there are a couple of tricks that you can do with this cpu to get more performance if you are doing strictly gaming. And then, if you wanna spend the extra minutes, I will show you actually how to fine tune the overclock for yourself and what to look out for and a couple of tips and tricks. Personally, since it's a very high-end system, you paid a ton of money for the CPU, for the RAM, the motherboard, I think you could spend a couple extra minutes to really fine tune it and make it your own. So let's get started now. Let's say you want to just overclock it quickly. Okay, so you want to get into the BIOS, get into the advanced mode into your BIOS, and then you want to go under tweaker or overclocking tweaker. Now, depending on the motherboard, this is going to be called in a different way. It might be AI tweaker for ASUS motherboard. This one is a gigabyte motherboard. So again, but the settings are going to be the same. Now, you want to find something that's called enhanced multi-core performance or EMP, depending on uh, the vendor and now or asus multi-core enhancement it's also called and you want to enable it this is going to effectively lift all your turbo limits uh, in case you don't have this thing you want to manually go and unlock the power limit and the power duration they are called that way you just find them and set them to the maximum but if you have this thing it's easier now second step is to set our performance cpu clock ratio so this is going to be the frequency of your normal cores because on these architectures we also have the efficiency cores so in here you want to input 50 okay as you can see 50 right there then you want to go and find uh, the efficiency cpu clock ratio and those are your e cores okay the first ones are called p cores and this one are called e cores so you want to set the p cores to 50 and the e cores to 40. then you want to find the ring ratio this in some motherboards is called cache ratio you want to input both the maximum ring ratio to 40 and the minimum ring ratio 40 okay just hit 40 on both of them okay nice at this point we have set all our clocks now remember to enable the xmp for your ram as well if you have it and now you want to go on voltage control okay now here we want to find something that is called v-core or cpu voltage something along those lines and you want to set it to fixed okay fixed or in some motherboard it's also called override but it's basically you input the voltage and that is going to be the voltage now here you want to write 1.3 volt okay now if you have a very lucky cpu it might be stable with just 1.25 and if you have a very unlucky CPU, it might need 1.35, but this is the range in which you have to be. Now, after this, you want to go and find something that is called load line calibration, okay, or LLC. Now, in my motherboard, it is under advanced voltage settings and then under CPU slash VRM settings. And it's called CPU vCore load line calibration. Now, every motherboard will have this graph right here, okay? Now, basically this is how your voltage behaves so under load your voltage drops okay even if you don't have a graph let's say you have one through seven you want to put four which is the middle one okay this is going to give you a balanced v droop now i will get more into it toward the end of the tutorial but for now just input the middle one okay so in my case the middle one is high as you can see so i just hit high okay and then that's it we are done. This is our overclock in case you want to just copy it. Okay, this is for productivity. Now let's get into the gaming preset. Okay, so for the gaming preset, you are basically leaving everything as it was before, but we are actually 
disabling the efficiency course. So do, to do that, we go under advanced CPU settings in my motherboard and we find something that is called CPU cores enabling mode, okay? And now, again, depending on the motherboard, this might be different, but you wanna go and find the number of CPU e cores enabled and set it to zero or disabled. Again, it really depends on the motherboard, okay? So after doing that, what will happen is the CPU uh, will have just the performance cores, like it was on every generation before 12th gen. Basically, before LGA 1700, the CPUs just had uh, you know, no normal cores and they were doubled by hyper-threading if they had hyper-threading. But here we have that and then we have some cores without hyper-threading. It makes the CPU run more efficiently, but for more performance in gaming, we don't need them. So after doing that, we can basically just set back this thing on auto. And now this will allow you to do two things. Now, the biggest one is you can now increase your ring ratio. Okay. So now this is going to be very CPU dependent, but every CPU I've tested can do 4.8 on the cache without the e-cores. So you want to set the cache to 4.8 and then here though, you really want to play around with it. So if you want to just copy it, so in case you want to really, really just copy it and forget it, I say just set this thing to 4.7, okay? And then just leave 1.3, as I told you previously, here, and then leave everything as we did for the previous preset, okay? So load line calibration level four, so in the middle, then you want to put 1.3 vCore, then you want to put, um, again, disable the power limits, and then you want to put 50 on the clock, the core clock and 47 on the ring clock, which is the cache clock. Okay. So now the tutorial is finished in case you wanted to just copy in case you want to spend the extra minutes, we will actually go into detail and tell you a couple of tips and tricks and how you can improve it. So by disabling the efficiency core, you free up a lot of thermal headroom, a lot of thermal headroom, like really. So what happens is you can actually go higher with your V core. So, Usually you can go pretty easily at around 1.35 and depending on the cooling, you can go all the way up to 1.4. Okay. This is my recommendation. I would not go higher than 1.4. Okay. Unless you're running a very high end custom water cooling loop and you know what you're doing. Don't go higher than 1.4 because it's going to degrade your CPU significantly faster. Here we will stick to 1.35 and basically you want to, you can upgrade your CPU clock ratio. And now, the range, depending on your luck of the CPU, is as follows. So my can do easily 51 here, but if you're very lucky, you can go all the way up to 5.3 gigahertz, okay? So all the way up to 5.3 gigahertz, you can do it without the efficiency cores, okay? So probably if you are extremely lucky, you can do something like this, because this frees up uh, thermal headroom for you to increase the ring ratio as well. So the ring ratio in certain games is extremely useful. So if you're really lucky, you might be able to go 53 on the CPU and 50 on the ring. And now 50 on the ring, it means that it's like one gigahertz or more higher than stock. And now on certain games, the cache alone will give you like 15% more performance in very cache intensive games. So Again, I really do recommend uh, you try out your CPU by yourself and now I will give you a small method. So how do you test it out uh, to see what's stable? Now this works for the productivity preset as well. Basically, you wanna go here and set it to 1.3. Okay, and then you wanna set this thing to 50, set these to 47, then you wanna boot it into Windows. Okay, test it out. And then if it is stable, you up this thing, okay, to 51. And then to 52 if it's still stable. If you crash, you come back into the BIOS and you up the V-Core, okay? And you do that until you find your limit uh, or until you hit your temperature limit by your cooling. I personally would recommend to stay at around 5.1 gigahertz because higher than that, you really spend too much power uh, without getting much in return, my personal opinion. So I think 5.1 gigahertz, 4.7 cache to around 1.3 or 1.35 uh, in the v-core again level 4 load line calibration which 
will mean around 1.25 to 1.3 vcore in actual load. I think it's the safest one for you. That's my recommendation. Uh, but now I will also give you uh, a, the last recommendation in case you want to tune more your productivity settings. So in case you want to tune these better, what you want to do is you actually go and enable back the efficiency core. So let's suppose we did that. Okay, and now if you have a very lucky CPU or if you have more thermal headroom, again, here you can go up to around 1.35. I wouldn't recommend higher because with the efficiency cores enabled, uh, the thermal output is very high. But again, you, you can go up to 1.4 if your cooling allows for it. But I would stay at a maximum of 1.375 personally. And now you can go over here and basically aim at a 51 performance core, a 42 uh, efficiency core, and around a 42 cache. This would be uh, your ideal target um, in case you wanted to do a productivity fine-tuned overclock. So you can look at something like this and test it out. Uh, but yeah, again, the initial settings are the easiest one to set and what will work for pretty much everybody. So let me quickly recap them. 50, 40, 40, 40, 1.3, level 4 load line calibration. That's it for productivity. For gaming, I would say 50, 0, 47, 47 with around 1.3 or 1.35. You can go up to 51, still in the recommended. But then if you want to explore and go higher, these are my recommendations. If you've watched it this far, I really appreciate it. And it means you've decided to inform yourself on your motherboard, which is always good. If it was helpful, please drop a like and a sub. And if you're not managing to get your CPU stable, drop a comment. I read and answer them all. Plus there are other people in my comments who like to tune their hardware and they will also try to help you out. So see you in the next one, guys. I have many tutorials for CPUs and GPUs as well. Bye.